Yo, peace, 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 family. Welcome back to another episode of Melanin Consciousness. It's your boy, Royal Nate. And today we're talking about land contracts, okay? Back in the 1800s, late 1800s, right after the slaves were freed, we all know that, what? We all were supposed to be entitled to 40 acres and a mule. And as we see, that really didn't happen the way that it actually was supposed to happen. So I want to tap into some of these land contracts that the United States federal government put into place during some of these times. And we can kind of figure out why them 40 acres and a mule were not guaranteed and given to so-called black people, descendants of slaves, however you want to deem us today. OK, so let me switch my screen so I can show you guys these land grants. And I'm not going to go through all of them by no means. Y'all know I ain't going through all of them. OK, but I do want to go through the Preemption Act of 1841. And why is this important? To me, this is important because we still have squatters today. Like we have people who are still squatting today, right? And there's always a legal issue. It's hard to get people out of certain properties. I'm in real estate, right? And so I know there's rental laws, there's certain rights that renters have, there's certain rights that these people have. You can't just run up in and change the locks on somebody's property if they're not supposed to be in there. Right. Like, even if this person does not have a signed lease with you and they've been in this property for a set amount of time, there's a legal limit. They're allowed to be in that property. And there's certain ways you have to go about getting them out the property. You can't just call the police and say, get these people out the property. Right. So the Preemption Act of 1841. OK, so this was before the slaves were free. Um, and a lot of these other ones were after they were freed. But this one was before permitted squatters who were living on federal government owned land to purchase up to 160 acres at a very low price. Less than $1.25 per acre. Damn, it's a lot of acres for $1.25. I know money was different back then. I know, I understand. Before we got removed from the gold, I won't get there. But before the land was offered for sale to the general public, to qualify under the law, the squatter had to be, one, the head of the household, two, a man over 21, or a widow, Three, a citizen of the United States or was intended to become naturalized. What does that mean? So that means you could be a citizen of the United States or you can be here and you're not naturalized, but you're thinking of becoming naturalized. You're thinking of becoming a citizen. So like a Native American and Indian, how they have their reservations, right? They're not citizens of the United States, but they can naturalize themselves through the Naturalization Act of 18, whatever that they try to usurp our birthrights on right they can become citizens but you have to be a citizen to get this benefit if you didn't you didn't have this benefit okay so then four a resident of the claim land had a minute for a minimum of 14 months okay so let me try to break this down for y'all real quick let's say a property is vacant right we see a vacant property is boarded up um, and no one has been there for two years. If you go in there and you start fixing that property up and you start living in that property, and you start bringing up the well-being of that property and then nobody checks you. But then somebody comes back three years later, right? And you have all this document. Look, I've been here. I've been doing this. Da, da, da. I've been trying to find the owner. I, he's nowhere to be found. That's going to be your property, bro. That's going to be your property. And I know a lot of you guys are like, what is he talking about? It's crazy. No, I've seen it happen. It does happen. I know people who been squatting before right i've had to deal with trying to get people out of houses because of squatting it's something that's real so then it goes the act further stipulated that ohio indiana illinois alabama missouri mississippi louisiana arkansas and michigan or any state afterward admitted into the union would be paid 10 percent of the proceeds from the sale of such public land the Pre preemptive act, the preemption act of 1841 declared that an individual was allowed to acquire federal land and claim it as one's property. However, for the claimant to preserve ownership over the land, the claimant had to do some things to legitimize the claim. One way was to be active, actively residing on the land. Another was to be consistently working to improve the land for a minimum of five years. It was not necessary that the claimant be titled to the land just to be living there and working towards improving the stake was enough. If, however, the land remained idle for six months, the government could step in and take the property. Preemption Act of 1841. Y'all look it up for yourself. OK, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. 
But do you see how what they're what basically all this is saying when it comes to naturalization, when it comes to intending to become a citizen, okay? When it's when, when they're saying all, the head of the household, these requirements are easy. That means anybody in the world could have done this. Anybody could have came anywhere across the world and got land here in America, acres and acres and acres and acres and acres. For dollar twenty-five. Anybody, all you had to do be a head of your household, a single man over twenty-one, intending intending to become a naturalized citizen. And just had to stay on the land. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. Right? And at that time, you got to think about it. Because we got these slaves. Everything's on the, the East Coast. 13 colonies. What's, what, what's going on in the other parts of America at this time? So who actually had these lands? Who had the rights to these lands? So I'm just wanting to bring this to your attention. Squatting is a real thing. It's still happening now. And... um. I'm going to go through a couple more of these real quick. Just real quick. Because I'm not going to make a whole nother video on these. So I just want to kind of just go through them real brief with y'all. So this Timberstone Act was passed by... Um, the Timberstone Act of 1878. It was the 45th Congress, session number two. Chapter 151. Um, and the United States sold Western Timberland for $2.50 per acre in 160 acres blocks. So I know when y'all hear Timberland, y'all think of the boots, right? <laughs> but the Timberland was actually Timberland where um, they deemed it unfit for farming. So nobody wanted it. So they're telling everybody like, nah, 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 nah. This is unfit for farming, slaves. Y'all don't want this. Nobody wants this, okay? This is bad land. And so the people who knew the truth, they're like, oh, okay, okay. So the act was used by speculators who were able to get great expanses declared unfit for farming, allowing them to increase their land holdings at minimal expense. The same thing is happening now. When we invest in the stock market, we invest in this stuff. These people get on TV and they'll say something negative about this industry. And what happens? That industry goes down. They go back in and they buy up. Same shit was happening back then. Okay. So in theory, the purchaser who was to make an affidavit that he was entering the land exclusively for his own use and that no association was to hold more than 160 acres. In practice, however, wealthy companies seeking to access natural resources semi-fraudulently circumvented the law by hiring individuals to purchase 150 acre lots, which were then deeded to the company after a nominal compliance of law. This was this was legal. Okay, only the companies with the letter of law while barrashly ignoring the spirit of it. So basically what it's saying here is these people deem these lands unfit for farming. Okay, so people are like, all right, we're not going to buy them. And because of that, they rose the try price way down and these people went up to buy it. But you only can buy 160 acres. So what the big corporations were doing at the time, they said, okay, we're going to hire people to go buy them because you only can use it for yourself. Just like if you get a, um, a property and you're doing a duplex, fourplex or whatnot, and you have to live in it first, you got to live in that one first, right? There's certain things that you have to do because that's your home. You're using it for personal use. Same thing over here. Like you can farm, you can do whatever you want, but you could, a business cannot get more than 160 acres. An individual would have to. So what they would do is they would hire people to go get them 160 acres and pay them off for it. That's how the land of America was being stolen. Are we on the same page right now? Are we on the same page? I know I'm going everywhere. Okay. But when we go back to even thinking about the $5 Indian, they were giving out land, bro. Give me that land. So now when we look up and we're talking about land is a million dollars and it costs this much money to live and da 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 no, Bro, it doesn't. They stole it. Literally. Okay. Uh, Kanye was screaming, America's for sale. America is for sale, bro. It always has been and always will be for sale. Understand that. Okay. Same thing in the Desert Land Acts. It was passed by the United States Congress in, on March 3rd, 1877 to encourage and promote the economic development of the arid... I lost my space, y'all. I'm sorry. The economic de uh, development of the arid and the semi-arid public lands of the western states. Through the act, individuals may apply for desert land entry to reclaim, irrigate, and cultivate arid and semi-arid public lands. The act amended the Homestead Act. The act off offered 640 acres of land to adult married couple who would pay $1.25 per acre and promise to irrigate the lands within three years. 
single man would get half of it, okay? But what they ended up doing, they really wasn't doing this. Individuals taking advantage of the act were required to submit proof of their efforts to irrigate the land within three years. But as water was relatively scarce, a great number of fraudulent proofs of irrigations were provided. Some fraudulent proofs were buckets of water spread through the property. So they was not doing what they were supposed to do. So, okay, we go back to talking about government programs, right? Government programs, we have so many government programs for you to buy property, for you to do a lot of different things in this country, right? But a lot of the times the government program be some BS and this is why people get mad because we use our tax dollars to pay for some of these government programs so, so people could irrigate the land, right? But then they ain't actually really doing the work. They're just taking the bread, bro, and running with it. So we have to understand that. Understand that, okay? Gosh, the United States Court of Private Land Claims. I might do a whole different one for this one, but all right, I'm out of here, y'all. So with that being said, y'all, I know it's a lot, okay? Um, I'm not here to say that I don't know who stole what. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. But when you start getting into some of these land acts and start understanding this, you understand how and why we didn't get them 40 acres in the mule. And some of the, the, the way that they stole the land by literally giving certain benefits to certain people and locking others out because they were letting other people in Europe to come. Come on over, okay? We'll give y'all all this land, okay? So while they were going through the process of freeing the slaves, they also were bringing people over, which was halting that process of the slaves being free. Um, with that being said, if I'm wrong about any information, y'all, you already know the deal. Let me know. I want to get better. I want to learn, and I want us all to learn together. Let's all grow together. Let's all get better together, right? Love y'all. I appreciate y'all. If you like this information and you think somebody can benefit from it, all you got to do is share it. That's it right just share it to them but if you don't and you don't think anybody can actually benefit from it you ain't gotta share it bro it's all good okay but also let me know what your thoughts below comment like subscribe you know the videos is coming i love y'all i appreciate y'all and at the end of the day it always is operation complete human love y'all and we out